where I'll be discussing the worst decisions by a rugby referee in the 2011-12 season. Let's get started. Number 9. This is fairly recent and not hugely important as it was just a test match, but it was Ireland against the All Blacks in the summer tests. The first test was hugely disappointing, with the All Blacks thrashing Ireland 42-10. With the second test, we were much, much, much stronger. We even led for a portion of the match. Right at the end, we're camped in New Zealand's 22 and it becomes New Zealand's scrum. Healy, the Irish loose head prop, drives straight through the scrum and wheels it around. Nigel Owens' whistle goes up. He accuses Ireland of deliberately wheeling the scrum by the tight head pulling out. This penalty is cynical, for it is difficult for referees to tell the difference in body language between a prop who is pushing and a prop who is pulling back. But Nigel Owens gave the penalty. Carter played it downfield and New Zealand scored a drop goal to secure the test 22-19. Number 8, and this is another one that isn't hugely important. It happened in the Super 15 between the Bulls and the ACT Brumbies. Now, more or less this whole match was just one big refereeing farce. But the key standout moment was when Mornay Stain clearly knocked on the ball. Everyone stopped to look at the referee. And a South African forward picked up the ball. The referee didn't play anything and the wing forward for the Bulls ran 60 metres and scored a try after an obvious knock on. 8. Our first one of the Rugby World Cup. Ireland versus Australia. And this was really important because it showed great hope for Ireland. Winning 15-6 on a game surely based on penalties. But were all the penalties just? Not a chance. Ireland got away with a huge amount that they maybe shouldn't have, and Australia were a little hard done by, although I do believe Conor Murray's try at the end was a try. Number six is another World Cup horror, and for a change, Wayne Barnes misses a forward pass that leads to Shane Williams going over the line for Wales against Australia. Oh, Barnes. Although I should point out that Australia won the match anyway, so that didn't really matter. Number 5. More Welsh players. In the group stages, Wales played South Africa and the match was very close. The South Africans only won by a very small margin, and this was a real eye-opener to people who doubted the Welsh. But James Hook's penalty, right near the end, which went over the top of the uprights, probably was inside. But again, Wayne Barnes decided not to check the video ref. This segment might seem like me bashing Wayne Barnes, but it's not all his fault, because at number 4 we have the Welsh Grand Slam. To get this Grand Slam, the Welsh had very dodgy wins against the Irish and the English. The topic for the Irish was the first match for the Welsh and the Irish, where Bradley Davis made a tip tackle, which was clearly much worse than Sam Warburton's, which I'll get to in a moment, where he counter-rooked Dunnick Ryan off the ball, lifted him onto his shoulder, dropped him vertically and Ryan landed on his neck and shoulders. He got a yellow card. Later on in the match, drawing to a close, Wales are two points down and Stephen Ferris lifts up a Welsh player. Now one of the Welsh player's legs was still on the ground so it arguably was not a tip tackle. But Barnes ruled it as a tip tackle, gave Ferris a yellow card and Wales took the penalty that gave them the victory. And against the English, David Strettle in the dying moments Scored a try that was ruled as not a try. Controversy again. Number three, we're getting into the big numbers now. And this is another one that was kind of just a home match of mistakes. This was South Africa against Australia. Bryce Lawrence failing to notice almost everything about the breakdown. He failed to notice the frequent Australian hands in the rook. And this very possibly cost the South Africans a semi-final place. Number two, I brushed on this earlier. And I'm sure the Welsh fans, if you are watching this, will be wondering why I didn't bring this up. This is Sam Warburton's tackle on Vincent Clare. Warburton's dump tackle was very controversial. He lifted Clare above the horizontal, yes, and dropped him onto his shoulders. This was probably a penalty offence, but referee Alain Roland's decision to give him a red card? Bit harsh. And number one brings us to the grand finale, and this is just the breakdown play by the All Blacks in the final. No one seemed to notice. Jerome Kaino and others constantly playing the ball while off their feet. At one stage, Kaino was actually off his feet, in through the side, and then knocks it on, and the referee never notices. While I don't actually believe that there's anyone watching this, there is only nine items here, and that's because I want you to pick the tent and the position it's in. Well, there you have it. Subscribe, follow me on Twitter, Tumblr all those things. This is the first 
hopefully of many. Thanks.